All right, everyone, welcome everyone to the webinar question and answer forum, SOLAS Weight Verification Requirements Revisited. Revisited because we did have an introductory uh, uh, webinar to uh, SOLAS um, a couple months ago when it was, when it was. <clears throat> and uh, today's webinar is sponsored by SCARU. Scarborough University was founded in 2006 with a mission to provide necessary, relevant, and continuing education to Scarborough employees clients and professionals engaged in international and domestic trade and logistics. My name is Kevin Ekstrand. I'm a licensed customs broker and certified customs specialist. I have the privilege of being the vice president of sales and marketing for Scarborough International and it's an honor to be with you today. Um, please note that a, a link to this presentation and video will be sent to each of you following today's presentation. This is an interactive webinar and we are here to answer your questions. If you submitted a question in registering, please note that I have them and we will be answering them, so you do not need to resubmit. If you have not yet submitted a question, please feel free to submit a question. You will find the Q&A button at the top of your screen. Your question will appear for the audience, so you may choose to show your name or be anonymous. I ask that you start submitting your questions right now. Um, please also note that you can easily adjust your windows. Please click on the top of the video portion to maximize or minimize this piece of the webinar so that you can see the full presentation. So while you're adjusting your screens and posting your questions, I'll take a minute to introduce you to Scarborough. Scarborough is, a, is one of the top customs brokers in the nation, a full service logistics company that has been operating for over 31 years. We are headquartered in the heart of America, Kansas City, where faith, family, and hard work make for a great organization. We also have offices in Chicago, St. Louis, Des Moines, New York, Dallas, Laredo, Nuevo Laredo, Mexico, and Shanghai, China. Beyond our own offices, we are part of a network of companies that puts us in every country around the world. We are truly a great partner to our clients. We collaborate, stand by their side, and actively participate in their growth opportunities by helping them navigate import and export regulation around the world. We value each and every partnership along with each and every relationship we build along the way. As always, I would like to thank each of you for being here today. To our many clients on the call today, thank you for your partnership. If you are not yet a Scarborough client, we welcome an opportunity to earn your trust in partnership. Scarborough again prides itself in our partnerships with government, trade associations, and the media. And today, we are very privileged to have Mr. Eric Johnson with American Shipper join us again. Um, Eric is a research director and IT editor at American Shipper, where he heads the publications, various transportation and trade compliance benchmark re research initiatives, and coverage of how technology is impacting supply chain practitioners. Eric is based in the Washington, D.C. area, but is actually joining us today from, from India. And we, 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 we are thankful for him getting up and, uh, and joining us today. Um, today's presentation, I'm going to have Eric make a couple comments, and then I'm going to introduce you to our, our second presenter. And then I'll make both available, both Eric and Patrick, available to answer your questions um, at the, after, after a brief uh, presentation on, on where we currently are with the uh, SOLAS VG and requirements. So let me first, let me turn it over to, uh, to Eric to begin. Thanks, Kevin, uh, and to Scarborough. Really appreciate the opportunity. And uh, apologies to anyone tuning in if there's any uh, um, audio difficulties. I am uh, I'm very far away, and fiber optic cable only does so much. So, um, but uh, anyway, it, for those of you who tuned into the first um, uh, webinar that we did, sort of a preparation webinar for VGM for the VGM deadline. Um, Really happy to be invited back to kind of talk about where we are now. Um, for those of you who did tune in, uh, you might remember that I showed some research that we did about um, the sort of state of readiness that shippers and LSPs kind of uh, voiced to us um, through a survey that we did um, about four or five months before implementation. Um, so we shared some of that research. I thought it would be better um, now that we're so much has, has happened since then, and we've actually passed the you know the implementation date. To share with you some recent research that we did 
Uh, and this was literally the day before and the few days after uh, the BGM rule went into effect. So you can see in the upper left corner, uh, we asked, were they concerned, you know, shippers, were they concerned about being able to just basically comply with the BGM requirement? And you had about three, uh, two, three quarters said they were, and only one, one quarter said they weren't. And of those, um, you know, a healthy proportion were very concerned. And this, bear in mind, is literally the day before and the day of the implementation date. So um, speaks a little bit to the confusion, the kind of lack of clear voice um, within the industry, um, kind of letting every, every single stakeholder, um, i.e. shipper, know what the responsibility on this was. Um, yes, if you, you know, turned to resources that were like us and like some other folks that were um, – you know, writing about this a lot, you probably knew what was expected of you. But for, for those that didn't, it's clear that they, you know, that they didn't know how to comply with this. And we can talk a little bit later. I've had conversations, lots of conversations in the last few days with, uh, you know, technology providers who have tons of stories about just a, still a, a general lack of awareness, especially at origin points um, in Asia uh, in particular. Um, just for context for the, you know, the, the poll that we did, um, you can see that about three quarters again of, of people, uh, both import and export. So they have, you know, varying concerns, um, in terms of complying with it in the U S complying with it in, in, in far flung regions and that, you know, are where the, the rule is being applied potentially slightly differently, um, in each country. Sometimes as we've seen in the U S um, slightly differently in each port, sometimes in each terminal. So um, it, people are wrestling with, with various dynamics um, and how this is affecting them. Um, I think that the biggest chart on the right here is kind of the one that is the most eye-catching, and that's that um, 87, close to 90% really, uh, of people think that they were – they were going to have their cargo delayed, some or all of their cargo. And 60% said a significant, they expected a significant amount. So um, it's, again, just speaks to the kind of desperation and confusion that, that um, people had as this was going into effect. All that said, and we can get into this more later, um, it, it's been, a, it seems from our, from what we hear, to have been a relatively smooth implementation overall. And I think a lot of that has to do with the way the industry just kind of came together to make sure that this was being, this was not going to be a, a massive hindrance to uh, the flow of containers. Um, and we can talk more about that maybe in, in the Q and A session about why, how, how that was accomplished. But just wanted to show you some data points that we had and, and um, interested to hear what Patrick has to say about um, some of the other stuff that they're hearing. All right, great. Thank you, uh, Eric. Now let me introduce you to uh, Mr. Patrick Culligan. Patrick is a licensed customs broker and certified customs specialist and the director of Scarborough's Northern Region, and most importantly, a friend. Um, he is a, a, our specialist, our resident uh, specialist on the uh, VGM Solus uh, um, rule, and uh, he's going to explain uh, kind of an overview of, of the rule again, just uh, in case folks don't know, and then kind of where we are today with, with that rule, and then we'll open it up to, uh, to start taking your questions, uh, which have already been submitted, and, and you should see those up on the screen if, uh, if you've submitted a question um, that we'll answer live. If we don't answer it, um, if, if Patrick uh, doesn't, doesn't answer it during his uh, great presentation. So, Patrick, I'll go ahead and turn it over to you, bud. Okay, thanks very much, and uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, I'm we're going to do a bit of background on SOLAS and the VGM. Uh, the regulation was passed at the end of the day to improve safety in the supply chain. Now, the implementation date, as many of you know, was July 1st, so it's here, and it's certainly not going away. Uh, Eric, you're actually exactly right. Uh, things have run pretty smoothly so far. Uh, we really haven't had any disruption in the movement of cargo here at Scarborough. Uh, we've been submitting the VGM since uh, July the 1st, you know, through the various uh, portals and such, and really have not, uh, have not had a, a large issue. Obviously, it's, a, it's different. It's a, the, game, the game has been changed a bit, and we have uh, you know, had to explain 
a lot of things to shippers that are unaware. But on the whole, shippers, uh, we feel, are or have been aware. So the enforcement date, really, and at the end of the day, is, was the implementation date, where if you had, did not submit uh, your BGM to the carrier, you were not going to get on the ship. It would be no BGM, no load. Now, the grace period that they refer to within the regulation, that allows for containers and transshipment without a BGM to comply with the regulation. The responsibility begins and ends with the shipper. The shipper is going to be one of three parties. One, the BCO, the owner of the merchandise. Two, the NVO, Scarborough, for instance. And three, the master loader, or the entity that consolidates various shippers' cargo. In many cases, this is also the NVO. Communicating the VGM is, is, I feel, very streamlined, and there's loads of flexibility for it. The carriers are really the driving force in that, and communicating the VGM is determined by the carrier you or Scarborough has chosen. So the consequences of not having the VGM submitted to the carrier, once again, is no VGM, no load. So now I'll just go into the two methods that you can go about obtaining the VGM. Method one is, I feel, fairly straightforward. You have to have the container weighed at a scale that's certified. Uh, Scarborough has uh, done this in many cases over the last couple of weeks, and we load, we, uh, I'm sorry, we weigh empty, and then we weigh again when the container is packed. And that's when to derive the information from the scale tickets, we provide that to the carrier. And one quick note there, bulk cargo must be weighed by this method and is not eligible for method number two. Method number two requires the weighing of the cargo and all the contents that you're packing in the container, which we uh, classify as dunnage and pallets and you name it, whatever is within that container has to be weighed. You then take the tear weight of your container, which can be found on the back of the back of the box or the carrier's website, add those two together, and that gives you your VGM. We've noticed many of the carrier's uh, systems, once you enter your container number in that system to submit the VGM, the tear weight is automatically being pulled into their system so at the end of the day, you're really just entering your total gross weight that you would have weighed uh, with your certified scale prior to packing the container. So now really, there's something that's come out that's a, a major, is a major game changer, I feel. And I call, I really refer to method number three. And this was published uh, by the Coast Guard and it's called the Declaration of Equivalency. What this is allowing, it's allowing shippers that have the terminals weigh the container once it comes into the gate, and the terminal at that point will provide that VGM to the carrier. So really, it comes down to, in this situation, I'd say business as usual. And all the hoopla that's come about uh, it's kind of been mitigated. Now there's still not, there's still a little bit of gray area in here because there's a lot of containers that are loaded obviously in the Midwest that go to a West Coast or East Coast port that are, are on on-dock rails. So there's still, that area that I feel is still gray. And if you're sending your containers over Canada or Mexico to be laden on a ship, you still must submit the VGM to the carrier you know, within the time frame that's necessary. Now the, what we're referring to, this new availability of submitting the VGM is the TWA, or the Terminal Weighing Approach. So the term, Terminal Weighing Approach has come about uh, from OSEMA, which is the 19 ocean carrier members of the Ocean Carrier Equipment Management Association. 
they obviously got together with a number of port authorities and the Coast Guard to give the United States the availability of this method of getting the VGM. One important thing to note, though, is this is just in the United States. So containers coming from all over the globe are still required to have the VGM sent to the carrier by the shipper. Over the last several days, I've discussed this, uh, this SOLAS and the VGM with uh, many of our partners throughout the world. And I've got uh, kind of a mixed bag of opinions, really. Uh, for instance, in the United Kingdom, I've been told that the terminals are weighing every single container. They're charging for this. And it's really not uh, had any significant, uh, this is no real significant change in day-to-day in -day business. In Italy and Germany, it was, it's been, doesn't look like it's that cut and dry. Uh, the, the shippers are using, you know, method one and two, and the carriers are saying they don't receive the information. There's obviously the VGM, there's no, you're not going to get on the ship. And the terminals in those countries have not stated that they can weigh each container. And then China and Spain, for instance, I also got uh, very uh, similar feedback was just that, you know, it's, it's another item that must be covered. It's a, it's a new regulation that uh, is requiring additional work and really more explanation to shippers and such that are not aware of the regulation. So when I heard that uh, the terminals are going to start uh, weighing the containers, obviously I was quite happy and pleased that I heard this and thought this would be a, a you know a win-win situation. But I also thought at that point, okay, what's going to be the cost? So we just I decided to discuss this with some of the carriers that we do business with, and thankfully at this time there's really been no talk of cost that's going to come out of it. But the carriers I did talk to did uh, you know use the word yet and uh, that uh, that was definitely in bold print I would say and uh, underlined so here are a few of the ports in the United States that are allowing the terminals to weigh the the, uh, the containers and some of the terminal operators Port of New York Oakland LA and while speaking with the carriers you know I just I ran it by two in particular just this morning and I asked them point blank, so if I don't provide you with the VGM, what's going to happen? And both of them came, came out and said, if, if, that doesn't not, if you do not submit the, submit the VGM as the shipper, the terminal is going to weigh it, they're going to give me the VGM, and that's what we're going to utilize. Now, the one thing that, uh, that's within the regulation that you do need to, to note, however, is that the VGM, you are still responsible for the VGM the shipper is ultimately responsible. So inevitably, if you're gonna allow the terminals to weigh the container for you, which I think a lot, of, a lot of shippers are gonna start doing, you're still liable per se, you know, within the regulation, even though know, liability is, again, a little bit of a gray uh, issue, you're still liable as the shipper for that VGM, so that you're, you're entrusting the terminals to weigh that VGM and provide it to the carrier timely.